Okay. I think we're live. Got a little camera adjustment here. I lowered it because of my non-Zoom capabilities, and I think I'm a little out of frame. All right, as people come in my chat, we'll see if we are firing on all cylinders and uh, get this thing going. Don't really know what I'm going to do, so I'm not in that much of a hurry to figure it out at this point. <laughs> but we'll do something. I want to show you guys a few new things that I got. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> There's Joan. Hey, Joan, can you hear me okay? Is that a go? Okay, we're good. Hey, Kat, Vicki, good morning. So I want to show you guys a couple little things that I got that's well, that's just my dirty, my jelly plate. I don't know how that got in the pile. Um, I was over at Queen Zinc. They had a 20th anniversary. Hey, Shauna. In business party Friday night. So I went over. Patty had 20% off on everything in the store. And um, I just got a few things there. Um, but one of these, I got the new, I see um, Robin raving about this art gl glitter glue for use. Hey, Tori. Hey guys, um, on my regulars in chat, you see the Artful Dabbler? That is uh, my friend Tori. She's in Ireland and she just started her, um, hey Susan, Gail, she just started her um, her own um, YouTube channel called the Artful, Artful Dabbler. So if you guys click on the dots next to her, to the right of her name in chat, um, you can get to her channel. and. Um, she just started out, so she's only got a few videos. I'm mesmerized just listening to her voice with her accent. I love it. So, and she's got some interesting mixed media stuff coming up on there. So, you guys want to check that out. We give Tori a big warm welcome. Hey, Dot. So, um, anyway, Robin has been talking about, when I say Robin, I mean Robin McClendon. The collage jelly printing guru. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Tori. That's how we all. That's how we all try to. We do here at this channel, anyways. Try to help everybody that we can. So, um, this art glitter glue is what she's been using a lot in her um, collages, and it comes with this. Oops, with the little tip. It's in a little container here. It's got a pointy tip and a needle that goes in the uh, little metal tip to plug it. Um, I haven't used it yet. But when I was over at Queen's Ink, they had these art glitter uh, little mini bottles. So I thought when, when I, like when we're going to the retreat in February, that I would take one of these with the glue in it and save room in my suitcase. And when I was at the Queen's Inc., I also got this. This is a tonic tool. I never saw this one before. Hey, Eileen. Hey, Shauna. Did I say hi? Hey, Jean. The other Jean. Other Jean. Neighbor Jean. <laughs> um, this is a little mini um, rotary cutter. Actually, I might use that today because this little piece here I want to make some washi tape out of this. This is really pretty up in person. CB! How's wet? And it's got a little cap for it. It goes on one particular direction. So that small, oops, the small little groove here fits around the um, blade. Or no, the wheel and the blades on this side for the wider side. But that looks really handy. Um... And you know I'm nuts about my um, my art, uh, my foil quills er, by We Are Memory Keepers. 
I should have known it was only a matter of time until I'd have all four of them. I started out thinking, I'm going to use this. I'm only going to need one. So I went for the medium tip, right? That's the one you guys have seen me use a lot. And then they came out later with the calligraphy tip. And I thought, well, dang, nab. I probably should have one of those. So I got the calligraphy tip. And you guys have seen me use this too. And then I thought, you know, I don't know. Do I need the other two? And I said, nope, I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't need them. And then I was doing something the other day. And I thought, ooh, a real skinny little line or a fatter line than this one would look kind of cool. So I did a little digging and I shared it on Facebook, actually, HSN. And I don't know that they still have them. I think they have these two now together, but they're more expensive than I got this set of two. This is the fine and the bold tips. For $29, I got both of these plus this pack of foils. CB, didn't you say you have them all too? <laughs> Patty, what are those tools? These are the, we, they're made by We Are Memory Keepers, and they are called foil quills. But you want to pay attention if you go to order these. <laughs> yes, I caught you. Hey, all thumb. Oh, Robin. Hey, welcome, Robin. Um, we are memory keepers have made foil quills that work in cutting machines so you can foil as you cut they're little tiny uh, bits that hook into your hey Gilly hook into your um, your cutting machine um, and then they have some of these that I think were run by battery and some that may be plugged in an electrical plug these have a USB tip these are called freestyle foil quills so if you want these it's the freestyle foil quills that you want to get um i know they sell them on hsn i know they sell them on scrapbook.com i'm assuming uh someplace like simon says probably has them whether they're in stock or not i'm sure you can get them on amazon but these are the freestyle ones and i'm going to do a comparison to show you what the different tips look like because several people has that have asked me and assuming I don't tie myself up in a knot here at some point, we'll do a little demo on the four, the four different tips. So let me get those out of my way. And this is the foil that came with it. And it's this, what is this, four by six size sheets? I don't know how many is in here, but there's a few anyway. Just a little sample that comes with it. You can buy separate ones, of course. Um, this... I love this thing. Xandra sent me this one. So I got um, yeah, the calligraphy one, Tori, is really, I use it a lot to make like um, I'll show you what, it, what how wide the tip is. Let me find it. Hang on. See these little lines right here? These little short lines that's just made with the streak of the uh, calligraphy tip going across the page and that's on a really rough surface but that's how wide that calligraphy tip is and here's a little bit of scripting done with that calligraphy tip i'm not very good at it with the tip but you know you get the idea so um we'll do a comparison but this you guys know uh that have been watching me i bought one of these from xandra's site and lost it before I got to use it. Hey, Z, there you are. Um, and then she found a couple. They were back ordered, and she found a couple more on. Um, I think it was Simon says stamp, and got her and I another one. Oh, thanks, Robin. Did you you got two more of these in the shop, Z? So, um, Tori, you guys, um, Z and Gala, um, I introduced Tori a little earlier. You'll see her in chat as the Artful Dabber. Um, 
she's watched my streams before and just started her own YouTube channel called The Art Artful Dabber. So Z, you might want to put up your link to your shop. Um, and all hail the queen, Gala is here. But I love this thing. It's got all these symbols on them. It's a Zodiac um, stamp. And I don't know what else I was going to say about that other than I love it. But it was laying here, so there's another mention. So I got a couple more of these small Seth Aptor stamps. I love these. I love his style with this stuff. And it really suits the kind of collaging that I'm doing now. But here's another one that I got. They're by Eclectica. I get them on his SethAptor.com on his own site. And these are small ones. And they just I'll show you what these look like, too. I'll stamp these out for you. And this one. I used this one in my last collage. But you, it's not that evident. I'm not wild about that last one I did. Love this one. They're part of his mini stamps. I'll show you those. And I got a couple of his um, baked texture um, embossing powders. I'll show you those too. Um, and if, for those of you who follow uh, Robin McClendon uh, on YouTube or her Patreon page or wherever, um, yeah, I'm mess going here. Um, you will have seen her. One of her demos, she used a product called Wood, W O A D. Um, I gotta turn my heater on. Hands are freezing. Roll this bad boy over here under my desk. Um, anyway, it's a it's hard to come by, let me tell you. But I know a guy and a lady. <laughs> the other side of the pond who hooked me up every now and then. And I was able to get my grubby mitts on this Aquarelle Extra Fine Wood. Blue Wood. And it's made into um, basically a watercolor. And it's kind of an indi indigo color. But you may have seen... Um, oh, you found some online, Vicki? Was it in the States to order it? Or did you have to go abroad, you broad? Did you order any, Vicki? I'd be curious to see what the shipping is from wherever you ordered from. This came directly from France. <laughs> but we'll play with that, too. My hands are freezing. Um, and remember the infamous brush that Robin uses, the bamboo brush? And she couldn't remember the guy's name. And I believe our one and only Picola that's here in chat a lot of times found him and lo and behold he was creating um his own website he does high-end craft shows all over the country maybe world i don't know um and he makes these handmade brushes some from synthetic material hairs, uh, some from natural hair. Um, and this is the one you'll see Robin do her scripting with. But she's had her brush for, she said, told me 15 to 20 years she's been using that same brush. And um, so these are not cheap brushes. But clearly they last a long time. And... Um, he has a bunch of different ones. So hang on, let me get this sticker off of here so we can just see the bamboo. So I got two. And it's a little tricky. His, let me put it in here. Uh, let me go grab his site. Hang on, give me a minute. I'm going to share his link. I'm going to go over to another browser. Oops. And come back over to you guys. Um, she sent me a picture of hers close up, Vicki, and measured it, and I got the same one. 
Um, there you go. Lebenzon, I think his name is Tracy Lebenzon brushes. They have all different sizes. This one, and you can see that hair goes out a lot longer than you think. Can you see that? Well, can we see it? Ah! Focus, you little rascal. There you go. See how much longer that hair goes out than you think it does? To a very, very, very fine point. This one is elk. You can specify in your order. <laughs> they wouldn't take up much room in a package, would they, Gala? This one is the elk, and that's what Robin thinks her choice was of the hair, but she, it's 15 or 20 years ago. But it's, she said it sound, she remembers it was specifically for like um, ink calligraphy and what she does with scripting. And this one in the description did say um, calligraphy and, and writing or print. I forget how it was worded. This one was a third the price and is um, synthetic goat. No, it's goat and synthetic mixed. Um, it is longer than it looks. It really is. It's so fine. And this one has kind of goes down to a white tip. And this one's a goat and synthetic mixed. So I'm going to try. I was messing around the other day, just down here real quick for a couple minutes. And I did some scripting with, with this little one. And um, I want to try some with this today, just to get the feel of them. But I love them. Okay. What else do we have on here? The stamps, this, this, this. Okay. Um, get my ink out of the way. Buckle up my sleeves. Won't need that right this moment. Let's start with the um, the quills. Let's get the quills out of the way. And I'm going to unplug my computer. So I got room in my thing for this. <laughs> Joan fights dirty. You got to watch her. She's a scrappy little rascal. Okay, so let's start with the smallest one and work our way up. So this one, I'm going to plug it in the USB. You can plug it directly in your computer. I have a, um, a plug that goes into the AC outlet. Um, you posted a link. Where did you post it, Vic? Patty, I posted a link. Yeah, she can go low and quick, Kayla. <laughs> Feisty little rascal. Um, so I'm going to let this warm up for a couple seconds. And let me get something. You know what? I'm just going to grab a piece of this. Black. This is just bond paper. Just computer printer paper. Hey, Carrie Ann. I did, you know what, Vicki? I don't think you can post a link here unless you're a mod. I think that's what the problem is. Live. Send it to me on Facebook, though, if you would. Did you, Z, did you put this, your shop link up there? Tori, I was talking about Zandra who is my mod Scraps to Beauty. Um, she has an online store with a lot of this kind of stuff in it um, called paintandpaperstudio.com. Mark, that's a new name. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Okay, my hands are freezing. Let me grab a piece of my foil. Here's a piece. I'll just use this. And um, they sent a piece of uh, uh, some of their washi tape that they use to, which is really low tack purposefully to hold this down and not tear it up. <laughs> I 
<clears throat> hey, Lisa, welcome. So I'm going to show you guys um, the different, these are the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill freestyle pens. They plug in by USB to heat them up. There, thanks, Gala. Tori Gala just posted the, the link to Z's, uh, Z's shop. And it's on, it's hot. So this one, um, and you kind of got to write a little bit slow with these. All right, there's the fine. Now let's get rid of the fine, let that cool down, and I'll move to the standard tip, Oop, which you've seen me use before. $20 for 10 millimeter tube. Oh, it's in a tube, not a pan. Oh, interesting. Where is it Where is it from, uh, Vicki? Is that on an Etsy shop? All right, he's going to let this one heat up for a second. And, hey, Xander, did you, you don't think you were here when I showed this. I got this at Queen's Inc. the other day. It's a tonic tool, and it's just, it's a mini rotary cutter. How cute is that? Got a little safety cap on there. This must be for something with this little edge in the bottom here. I don't know if that's just to grip it to pull it off. I don't know. They usually think of real clever things that I have no idea what it's for. <laughs> to be figured out later. Oh, here's another set stamp I wanted to show. Oh, thanks, Vic. Oh, you're welcome, Mark. Thanks for popping in. Okay, that one's hot enough. And this one they called standard, not medium. So when you do the scripting, you kind of have to write a little slower than normal. Let me see if that works. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Not not the paper quilling. These are just the name of the tips. That was fine. Hang on. Standard. And this is the bold. Let that one heat up a second. Xander found some really cool. Um, are you going to show those new varnishes um, to Daisy when you stream? Xander's going to stream at four o'clock. Scraps to Beauty is her channel. Hey, Kathy. Um, I'm just stalling while this warms up. Can you tell? They were really cool. And I, we, it was so funny when I texted you yesterday to find out where you got them. We were already in Michael's. Hey, Marilyn. And we had just left a Walmart that was across the street from AC Moore. Dave said, you want to try AC Moore? I said, nah, they're getting ready to close down. They probably don't have anything. He said, well, let's go to Michael's. So we go all the way down to Michael's and get in there. And I didn't see them. And you said, oh, I got them at AC Moore. I thought, ah, crap. With the Christmas rush, I wasn't up to going back to the other end of town and elbow my way in there. That's warm. Okay, this is bold. I 
I'm trying to do something similar so you can get the hang of what this looks like. And I got it. I've used this piece here, so I'm going to skip down a little bit further. For that one. All right. And now the calligraphy kit. I'm going to need to get four USB plugs. <laughs> Get a hub out of the side of my laptop where I can hook them all up at once. So this is the calligraphy tip. This is the wide flat one. I went out yesterday. Dave went with me under the um, assumption we were going to get all the kids shopping finished. Uh, we did put a good dent in it, but um, we are not done. I tell you what, one of the one of the girls in our family we buy for is a 5T. And that must be a very popular size in the area because every store we went into, they had very slim pickings in a 5T. So Ooh, that's gone. <laughs> Don't do that at home. Okay, so this is, I'm going to try to do it like, I can't do calligraphy, but I'm going to try to write with it on that vertical angle so you can kind of get the idea. I'm going to run out of room. I really, you'll see how pitiful this is. Don't judge me, people. I do like how it scripts, though, with the, if you get the angles in there just right, which I rarely do. I'm going to skip this used area again. All right, good enough. I mean, that probably cool. Well, Patty, I don't think 5K has ever carried much. I don't know why. Is the child supposed to go naked for a year? <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. Put that over there in case we need it again. I think I can use it. Oh, that's pitiful. <laughs> oh, and you know what? It skipped a lot. That's not good. I'm going to put this back in. Let this heat up again, and then I'll, I'll do another little demo of this tip. All right, we'll come back to this one. So here's the fine standard and bold. You can see there is a need for all three. <laughs> As I have convinced myself. Actually, the fine and the standard are pretty close. It is finer. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. All right, and then there's the bold. It's kind of reflective. Let me turn this daylight lamp on. Let's see if that helps even it out any. Very shiny. See, it skipped where I went fast to do some of these strokes and where it was used down here. You can see where it blanked out, where it didn't pick it up because the oil was already pulled off the backing paper. Um, here I had two clean shots at the fine and the this one we're going to do over. That's a crappy demo right there. Let me give this bad boy a fair shot. I'll so show you just some regular um, using the wide part of the tip. What kind of lines it makes. Um, That gives you a little bit better idea. It doesn't look that great on this paper for some reason. I can't get the light to make it look right. It's a really pretty gold foil. It's not... Uh, that's really weird how it's coming up on there. Forget this horror writing with the Y underneath the H. 
but you can see where it, it, it skipped all there where it wasn't warmed up enough yet. But it's a, and here you can see the solid lines of how wide the line is there. So there you go. Uh, Z, paying attention. <laughs> oh my. Um, so let's move that out of the way. Oh. Do I love snowmen? I suppose I don't have any adverse reactions to them. I love them more when I'm having a hot blast, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, let me show you these stamps of Seth's. Gala made some really cool um, washi tape, if I must say so, using my stamps. Um, sorry, hang on a second. Um, she used deli paper. Do you remember which deli you used? Hey, Amalia. Um, she made vertical rows of my pictograph stamps with one stamp after the other on a white paper and made her own washi tape with it. Must do. And, uh, so, um, I'm waiting for her to answer me what kind of washing tape she used. The Dixie All Purpose. So I think that's this. That's the real fine one, right? This. That's the real fine one that we can daddy van on both sides and it's crystal clear. Did you daddy van any of your any of your papers? Bev, this, my little petri dish. <laughs> this is rose gold watercolor that I make myself. Um, it is yum malicious, I got to tell you. I don't sell this, um, but Zandra, who is my one of my mods in Blue Scraps to Beauty, she has a website um, and she makes my recipe and sells this and some of her own blends using creamer, uh, German, really high quality pigments. I wonder if you'd use it with medium. So you would use a double-sided tape to stick it down and go over it with medium? Is that what you're going to do, Z? I mean, uh, Gala? Oh, my hands are frozen. So anyway, okay, let's get let's get more, more stamping and less yapping. So I got a couple of these stays on little pads here. Maybe we'll use Seth stamps on these. So let's try this one. This one is the one called like ancient color wheel or something like that. I've used this in one of my collages before. Oh, so you'll, okay. All right. Well, that makes sense then. Hey, Sandy. I love Seth After's style and um, that grunge, but kind of um, ancient. Uh, that looked like it. Maybe this was the best paper to put it on. I was hoping to reuse it is why I put it on there. But this is the ancient color wheel stamp. And this is purposeful in the design, all these smudgy bits. Oh, look. Double whammy. Hey, Elaine. 
Yeah, his die. Some of the dies, I really like them, but I don't. I don't use. I have a die cutter. I don't really use it. Happy. Speaking of dies, there's happy die. How you doing, stranger? It's good to see you in chat. Um, this one I just used last night with some. Um, uh, of the fake texture embossing powder. I locked up there. Did you feel me lock up? Let's just try these stamps on one each of these different color ink pads. Um, just to show you what the images look like. I usually like circles, but this little, I don't know, kind of reminds me of some sort of building or support or something with squared off edges kind of looking deal. That kind of caught my eye. And this one is one of my faves. This one's pretty painted up already. I got to remember to clean that off better. Um, let's use this one here. This is the spice chai the last one was ganache the first one was cloudy sky this gray all right there's this one and these are in his mini collection of stamps there's quite a few of them All right, and I'll show you these all up close here in a minute. And this one is Claret, I think. Yeah, Claret. It's a reddish, dark reddish. I haven't even taken this one off the paper yet. There we go. All right, so there is um, there are these stamps. I think I, I think this one remains my favorite. Get it a focus from Mama. There we go. See how grungy they look and splattered and all that good stuff and aged. All right, so there are those. Um, while we're on here, let's do. Let's emboss something. Let's use this one, Versa Mark, and I'll show you these embossing powders. Oh, and remind me to show you a few new papers I got thanks to CB spending my money. You know you did. Hey, Judy. All right, a little embossing powder down there. And let's grab one of these. This one's called Patina Oxide. It's a Seth After Bake Texture Embossing Powders. Right? And see how it looks. It's kind of, you know, how copper, when it patinas, it's turquoise, and it patinas to like a brassy, bronzy, coppery color. Put some of that on there. Excess back in the jar, and it should only stick. If you're going to do something like this on a card, you guys know to use those little uh, little bags of the gum kind of powder in it that you can um, wipe over your surface first, and then none of these little bits that don't belong there will stick. And then you take your little heat gun. Heat gun. Hmm. 
Hello, lover. I know that was too far away for you guys to see, but now this is embossed. Let's see if I can get you to see this right. Come on. Focus for my, let me put something a little more, a little more body underneath it here. There we go. Stop flopping around. See how you get that copper coming out with the turquoise? So I'm sorry, I said that backwards. A copper roof will patina with this green color on it. It starts out copper and the patina turns the turquoisey color. Isn't that cool? All right, so let's do another one. Let's do this one again. This is the um that square design. I forget what it's called. But if you go on his website, you'll see all of them. It's laid out pretty nice and easy to maneuver through. Let's do this one. This one is the Ancient Amber. Hello. There we go. Right, and this one looks like this. Put that on there. Back in, oh shoot. I, sh I knew that this paper was going to be too frail to support that length of travel. Let me pick up what I can off of here and put that back in the jar. And these last little granules, we're going to call those lost. Oh, shoot. You know what I did? I just threw them right on top of my jelly plate. <laughs> okay, that's all right. All right, here's this one. He's gone. I love to watch this turn. I might need a couple other colors. There was one that was called like something like Tucson Red or something. I should have got it. I had it in the cart and took it out of the cart. Don't ask me why. I'm trying to be reasonable, but you know that never works. So here's this one called Ancient Amber. Those little drop, those little dots that come up raised out to the side. How can you not like that? You know, we got to do this one too. What the heck? Would be wrong not to do this one. I haven't even taken this one off the backing yet. All right, let's, just for gigs, I'm going to, well, if I do that, I'm going to waste it, though. But that's okay. It'll be worth the experiment. Are you going to look? Oh, yeah, yeah, I hope. How do you need his beeswax? I know I used that. Xander and I went to his class. I think, Z was that last year at Queen's Inc. when you came? We went to his class. I'm going to kind of mix this and the other one and see how it comes out. Um, and he, these were just coming out the, for the first time. He had, I think, a second wave of colors that joined in the line. But we used them there, and we were using the beeswax to finish off um, projects that we did. All right, I'm not going to pile that up. I'm just going to swoosh this around and let them kind of mix and cover there. And again, that one's sacrificial. <laughs> hey, gone. Two years ago. Oh, wow.
there's that one with the a uh, little bit of the turquoise mixed in. Do these do these pictures look dark to you guys? It looks dark on my screen. I don't know if that's the way my computer's set. I have a new MacBook Pro and it's got a some kind of setting in it for the light that you're looking at. So I don't know if it's just the way I'm looking at them or what. Anyway, so that's that's those little ditties and his stamps. Um Put that aside. And what else did I want to show you guys? So we did this. All right, let me get rid of this nest of wires here. Oops. Uh oh. Okay. Random gold leaf foffling around. All right, let me put these away in a safe place in my foil drawer. How about that? Um, oh, this. I want to look at this. And I'm going to make washi tape out of this. It's all coming back to me now. Okay, hang on. Let's see. I want to... Um, oh, I just had an idea. Uh, occasionally I do. I have this big double-sided tape. I got this at the Queen's Ink, too. Um, it's two inches wide. So I could grab a strip of that and a couple narrow strips. But this one, I could punch circles out of and have sticky circles, I bet. Thinking, just thinking. Um, wood, 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 wood. I'm gonna grab a little hunk of bee paper here. And let's try a little, wet this up a little bit. Let that sit for a second. Let's try my new little brushes. This is the Thin Elk one. You got the big roll I gave you. You got the big roll. You got the big roll I gave you too. Oh, you know what? Maybe you gave that to me, Z. Is that what you gave me? I just saw the Queen's Ink label on there and figured that I got it. Oh, and you know what, Xander? Dave cut that um, red rosin paper. <laughs> he saw it. He had to get out of his saws all. And saw that huge thing into three lengths. So I have a box uh, to put that in for you. Eileen. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Hang on, what am I doing for? Was it two inches? Oh, no, Xander. Yours was even bigger. I remember it now. I tell you, when I when I get organized, I hose myself because I can never find anything once I get organized. I do remember that. That was a big one. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So this... I don't know how much of this consistency I'd have to get used to with this. But let's see what happens. So that looks pretty dark. I'm going to wash this out a little bit and see what this looks like. And more of a wash. Hey, Marie. Welcome. Haven't seen you for a while. 
And this is the larger Lebanon brush. This is the goat and synthetic mix. I have not used this one yet. So let's see how this one works out. They feel nice, I can tell you that. This one has such a long tip on it. Both of them do. Come down to a finest, finest point. Hey, Terry. So here's what that looks like bleeding out. It's a really dark black blue, like a Payne's gray. And then fade it out. And I, I don't, I forget the history of this. I think it's was used for some kind of ancient dye. Um, for fabrics or whatever. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself on the data, Terry. <laughs> this guy, I mean, this makes literally a hairline with this. Like one hair tip there. Pushing it wider and wider. All right, now we're just playing. <laughs> These definitely have a nice feel for doing that kind of calligraphy and scripting. But anyway, that's wooed. Woo wooed. I know I'm going to say that every time now. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, I want to show you the new papers. It's only a few of them. CB alerted me on Black Friday that ArtQuest was it U.S. ArtQuest CV? I think it's U.S. ArtQuest. Um, was having a sale where their um, uh, full sheets of handmade paper were 60% off. And in just about every case, that made them cheaper than the full sheets. I mean, the half sheets, rather. They were cheaper than the half sheets. Name the brush you were just using. Uh, it's made by Tracy Lebenzon. Um, L-E-B-E-N-Z-O-N. -E He's got a new website out. And he uh, makes handmade brushes using bamboo. Uh, different types of bamboo. And natural or um, and some synthetic hairs. Um He's awesome. So this, somebody was asking me if this, Xander, I think it was you asking me if this was a stamp. So here's the page I did last night. I came down just for a little bit and was messing around. And I'm not wild about this. It didn't, I guess it's all right. But in my head, it was going to come out better. <laughs> I used um, this stamp. And I did some embossing with the Ancient Amber. And I thought it was going to come out more like this shinier bronze. And it didn't. And I think that's what took away from it for me. I mean, up close, you can see that it's somewhat shiny right in there. And there's one over here. But it just was, it didn't pop the way I thought it was going to. But I used a hunk of this paper, as you can see, as the background for this one. Um, so this paper, look how sheer this is. Sandra, I mean, uh, Gala, I assume you'll be wanting to make a negligee out of this. <laughs> As you can see, 
through it and it's got these gold emblems that are cute as a button. I don't know what they mean, if they mean anything, if they're just somebody's pictograph, like I make my pictographs and have no idea what they are. Um, but you can see the, the um, fibers in there, right, pretty clearly, right? <laughs> oh, Gala. This one I think is called Gold Coins, and I didn't know what this was going to be like. It's textured heavily. It's a small, this is a full sheet, and it's much smaller, but it's embossed. And it's gold, so I mean, how big can that be? Focus for mother, won't you please? Well, there we go. Well, it's in and out. There. You can see the texture on it, right? And even on the back, you can see how puckered it is. And that's that one. This one, remember the piece that I love and I've been looking for? I'll show you. It's the same stuff in a different color family. This is the one I was looking for. It's in the clear fibers with the um, chocolate brown font. They don't have this one anymore that I can find. Hey, Jan. Uh, I can't find that color anywhere. They had a hunter green. I'm not a big green fan. A hunter green doesn't overly wow me. But I got this one. This was navy, dark blue. It's more like a, in person, I would say it's more like a royal flag blue. And it says gold on it, but... It doesn't seem metallic to me. It seems like it's just a flat gold. But it's fibrous. It's pretty. It's sheer. It's got the print on it that I like. Um, but here's the big find that CB called me about because they had this one that I've been looking for. And I, I figured they had this one when I first found this site recently. Uh, my friend Lou Jean had sent me this piece of this years ago. And then somebody reminded me when I was looking for his papers that um, that was one of the loose ends and U.S. Art Quest were the two sites she usually sources her papers from. She sent me some really cool stuff. And this was a, a piece of this was one of those cool things. But I couldn't find it. And then when she gave me the link to Art Quest, I went out there. They were having trouble with their website. And they had ver verbal descriptions, but no thumbnails. So finally, the site was up and running. And lo and behold, they have this. So, um, let me put this around. So I got two while I could find it, but I just love this. And I might jelly print on another, like rip this one in, in fours and jelly print on it like I did the other pieces of it that I really liked. I like the random red seals. And I just like the columns in it and the scripting. I don't know if these things say anything. It says the Japan. I guess that means Japanese, Japanese alphabet. Um, I don't know. I know enough to be dangerous. And this one, I just thought, oh, mama got to have some of this. It's uh, a purple with gold foil on it, but I love the pattern. Look how shiny that one is. I wish they had this in different colors. Alas, they do not. Let's see if there's a tag on here. Nope. No, these don't have tags on them. But anyway. art medium some things. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to keep a piece of this out. Maybe we'll chop that bad boy up and jelly plate on it a little bit. All right. Let me move these over to the safe zone out of harm's way. 
I gotta find a storage solution for these big hummers, though. I gotta tell you. Okay. Oh, I wanna before I forget. I'm gonna take this. Watch this magic trick. Ooh. <laughs> oh. It's like I'm some kind of magical genius or something. <laughs> Anyone believes that hasn't been around long enough to know better. Oh, plug my laptop back in. Oh. Interesting, CB. Um, okay. So the, see this up close? That's got all kind of different roll-offs on here for when I was jelly, jelly plating. So let's uh, break this bad boy down a little bit. This newsprint tear is so easy. <laughs> All right. So do I want to use this and make some uh, tape that I can punch? Why not? Oh, jeez, that was loud. Then you have to figure it out. That's a roll off. That's great for you. <laughs> hey, Tam. <laughs> I'm still. I still have a stack to send you where where I roll off on card stock, though. CB. <laughs> I won't forget you. <laughs> Okie dokie. So let's see. Let's find the end of this bit. Oh, look at that. How handy are you? All right. That's still not sticky, not sticky. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think this is not good the heck you know what i don't know about this this is coming up separate maybe i gotta get down to where it's actually stuck to each other hang on hold the phone oh let's try this this was peeling see where it came off separately from the backing that's not good for what i'm going to use it for Four months, not that you're counting, Jean, uh, Jan. <laughs> Good for you. I don't know when I'm going to go out. Every time I think I'm going to think about going out, I'm thinking, nah, I don't think I want to, I don't think I can walk away from my paycheck just yet. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You see how me, see me almost grow up? I guess it would work both ways, right? It would just have the tape on top of it, which I don't want to do. Almost hosed it up. It wasn't exactly straight, but straight enough for argument's sake. Lost a little bit of that edge there, but that's okay. Oh, you know what I can do? I can try out my little um, my little roller. Now, where did I put my um, cutting mat? There it is. Gosh, I'm finding everything now so far. <laughs> All right, so let's 
I don't know. I can never do this well. And I'm going to lop off something. Let's use this small cutter. So I lop off even less than usual. Yes, I know you have, uh, Jan. I think you'll be just fine. I think I would miss the social interaction, too. Oh, that cut nice. Of course, I wasn't close enough. Oops. And it skipped off the ruler and had a little, had its way with my finger. Ever since then, I'm a little gun shy on just giving it one good rip down the side. I thought this rotary cutter would help a little bit, but I don't know. Well, now I'm really cutting into the tape. See what I mean? <laughs> I can't. Ah. <laughs> Hang on, I'm not looking at chat right at the moment. I'm trying to keep all my digits. See how I went wonky on that one again? Oh, for Pete's sake. I have to get my big cutter out and just take a slice off of it. I know that's wonky. Yeah, not too bad. All things considered. Let's use the scissors, shall we? Hey, Pat. Yeah, it's good to stay. Have a, Everybody that retires has said to me, um, the mistake they see people make is they retire without a plan for a continuing busy life. You need to be social. You need to have a reason to get dressed and go do stuff and learn new stuff and, you know, maybe volunteer. There's all sorts of things to do. But when they've seen people go out without a plan and then they flounder for a while and uh, have bad outcomes sometimes. I'm not surprised, Eileen. Oh my God, Judy! I, you should have seen me sew a couple, several years ago. I did it. I did jelly printing on fabric, on denim, uh, white denim, and different fabrics. And I tried to make pencil pouches that just was a piece of material like this. I folded it up here, folded this side over. So I only had to stitch like here and here. <laughs> Put a piece of Velcro in the closure. Oh my gosh. Um, it was quite the, quite the stream, I got to tell you. I think I'm going to stamp on this. Oh, maybe I'll stamp and emboss <gasps> on this. Maybe, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's put this away because I'm going to, I guess I'll use that for something at some time, but maybe a little practice off stream would be the wise, wise way to go. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay. Let's get this out of my face. Out of my face, you go. Okay. You know, this. Maybe I'll make some skinny ones out of this. One inch. We'll do some one inch. I had some of this out here somewhere. Oh, I'm tapping. That's what I do when I'm thinking, for those of you who don't know. 
<laughs> thought I had to this open. No matter. It's not like it's going to go bad when I open it. The static electricity down here is a lot today. Okay, let's see. Where's my starter? Where's the end? There it is. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to... You know what? I wonder if I should emboss it before I use the tape because of the glue on the back of the tape. You know what the problem is from, from my brain? See how short the distance is between the blade and the fittings there? So I only... Like this bit and the other side is bumping the ruler. And I only have that little bit of room there as a guide to try to not screw up too badly. <laughs> it's not working. Keep your voice down. Okay. I'm going to do this one before I glue it. Hey, Chris. I'll do this before I do it. I'm going to use this one, I believe. Maybe I'll do one of each. Who knows what I'll do? Let's just do something. Maybe I'll throw in some circles. I got to get more of that set of stamps made with that circle in it. I'm sold out of that one again. All right. Trying to keep my big head out of the camera. These are going to be just the right size, I think. Uh, yeah, I think you can, Eileen. I think they had a little pack of them actually there. That doesn't even... I can't tell where that is, obviously. I don't even see the sheen on it. Let's just skip down to here and assume that's good. All right, let's... I do this. So which one? The bronze or the turquoise? Probably this one for more contrast, right? See how I had you all agree with me there right off the bat? When I don't even know what the heck I'm doing myself. Oh, cool. All right. You know what? Let's just do a couple more of these. See how quiet I get when I concentrate. You should. Gail is probably play, praying that I concentrate even more often. <laughs> so I shut my yap. Oops. Let me hold this up here safely. And flick it a little from the back to get anything loose off of there. Let's see if I can get this back in the bucket. You know, with all this, you guys, I'm sure have heard about all this COPA laws and everything. Patty, I need a sheet. I need a sheet. You need a sheet under the sheet? Eh. That sounds like too many sheets to me. Too much sheet. <laughs> many other things would qualify, Gala, but not that. With all this kappa stuff, 
I don't quite, um, the more videos I watch, the more confused I get. Heat gun. Um, I understand that people that create content for kids now have to market as such. And when they do, they're going to lose the ability for comments, uh, the ability for people to ring a notification bell and subscribe and their search capabilities. So, um, mine is marked for adult content. Um, we all know I don't cater to kids. Bless their little hearts. Um, however, how am I in jeopardy if I have my videos marked as produced for adults? Um, I don't use kids' products. I do use bright colors, God forbid. But I'm not sure what possible jeopardy I can be in given what I do. Um, that's really subtle. I should have probably done it in black. I don't know. But what about from YouTube, Gail? And who's the ones doing the fine? I think it's uh, the problem is more how YouTube is going to be as by okay, no down channels, but YouTube doing their own their own thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm in jeopardy of having a forty-two thousand dollar fine for claiming to do a video for adults and not having anything to do with kids. I mean, suppose a kid comes on my channel. I mean. Then what? I think it's more parenting. I'm reading the chat. Sorry. That's the fine per video offense. Yes. And I heard they go by the, the, how much the channel earns, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I know I've seen some, all these people, well, not all these people, but several people, are um, shutting down their channels because of it before it's even final. Well, from what I understand, YouTube and Google, Google were collecting data from children that I guess they should not have been collecting. Um, but you have to be 13 or older, I think, to have an account of your own. It's very confusing. So I don't even understand what problem I might have with the bot CB. Like, for instance, I'm doing videos that are not geared to children and they're marked not for children. So what could the bot find on my channel that could give me any kind of heartburn? I don't know. I do not know. I shall just press on and hope for the best. Okay, so this is the one that's already been made into tape. I think I'm going, I'm going to get a different kind of powder because I don't think either one of these are going to contrast enough. I think they're going to... Actually, that one might look kind of cool. It'd be very subtle instead of more striking. I might do that one. 
Okay, I take it back. I did this one scan of the channel. Um, I forget what it even how, what it was even called now. That goes in to check to see if YouTube questions any of my videos being marked for adults, and there were zero conflicts that came up. Anyway, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? I was going to do circles. <laughs> keep me focused. And I hope this doesn't, you know what, I'm going to do one first in case this is too much for this glue. Right. And melts up my adhesive. Uh, we'll see. We shall see. I think this is my favorite one. Oh, that didn't get all over there. Rats. Okay, crap, I am going to have to put more on it than I wanted to. Sorry, not watching chat at the moment. You know what, if I get demonetized, that's not going to be anything that upsets me too bad. Because, Debbie, as you know how much money we get off of this. <laughs> I might be able to buy more, more of this every quarter. <laughs> um, be good. Hey, Sharon. That is starting to pucker a little bit. See, it got a little wonky there. But it's kind of cool. Oops. I like that one. I'm going to do more of those. And if it gets wonky, it gets wonky. All right. Let's just carry on with this, shall we? Hey, Chai. Welcome. Oh, no, I don't know where that one is exactly. Let's assume that's a good... I'm going to have to do these smaller sections because I can't see where the heck they are. <laughs> Eileen, you're probably going to have a stroke watching me. Oh, yeah, they almost butt up again. They do touch each other. Great. Let me just... Oh, shoot. I don't know where I put that one. <laughs> do you see my problem? I'm not the neatest embosser, by far. Okay, there, I'm going to mark this with my finger so I can just get these all down here. That'll be the last one.
Oh, no, you know what it is, and it's sitting under the tree. That seems unfair. <laughs> okay. All right, let's hit this bad boy with the heat gun, see what we get. I, I hear you, Susan, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of misinformation, misinterpretation. Uh, you know, nothing's exactly final yet. Um, I believe I understand that YouTube is considering giving us a third option in a way to mark our videos that's, I think, called mixed audiences or something. But, um, yeah, I can't be too worried about it till I need to be. Well, it did it did cut a buckle, uh, but we'll see how it goes. But it's, I think it's pretty though. I like it's kind of like the background, a little darker, but the same colors. I like how those little copper nuggets are in there with the turquoise. Me likey. All right, let's put those off to the side. Now, what was I going to do? Oh, I didn't make tape out of that one. Let's make this into tape. Okay, let's try this. Can I do it better like this? Cutting this off so I don't have to wrestle the roll. Oh, wait. Does anybody see the air of my ways? <laughs> ah, this is, I cut the, I'm going to cut the embossing in half if I make skinny strips. What's the color powder called? It's Seth Apter's um, baked texture embossing powders. This one's ancient amber. And then the turquoise one I'm using is patina oxide. Come on. All right. So let me go back to the wide tape. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have to lose some of that. So now, oh lordy, now I got this in my hand. I know where to go. You think it'll look good cut in half? It might. You know what? It might. It just might. What the hey? And I'll try to um, keep away from the dead edge. Let's just see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? It's a piece of paper. I'll just make more. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Um, Amalia. Let's see if I was really good with that little rotary cutter. I could go right up the middle there. As we know, I am not. Let me put these away. These burnish down a little bit. Hey, Rihanna. Okay. 
All right, I got a little bit of, hello, tape sticking out there. Let's get rid of that immediately. Don't follow me like this at home, folks. <laughs> I'm sure there are tape makers and embossers that are much more practiced and skilled than I am. I will just try anything. Sometimes that's good or bad. I don't know, but it is what it is. All right, I'm going to trim this piece off of here that doesn't have any sticky on it. There's that. Clean those up. Clean that up. Now let's see if I can cut these apart. I wouldn't have to, though. Hey, Norma. Okay, Sharon, thanks for stopping in. So I could leave this tape on here together and use it as one whole piece if I wanted to. Let's see where this bends. So that piece would look like that, which is those little bits on it. Actually, I You know what? I think I'm going to cut it in half. As everybody cringes who doesn't agree with me. Breathe deeply and you shall get over it. <laughs> Gala, how did your matte medium go? That one's kind of just interesting having those little bits off of it. And here's most of the design. So we'll put those over here in the stash. All right. Now I did say I was going to try to jelly print. You know what? I'm just going to. I think I'm just going to cut this instead of trying to tear it. Or, yeah. I should just fold it and tear it. I just wanted to find a center line. I have a hard time doing anything straight. <laughs> well, I should probably correct that statement, but in it, we'll just let it go. I'm going to cut. These are going to get chopped up and used in bits anyway, so I'm not too awfully worried about them being symmetrical. I just want them in more manageable pieces for the jelly plate. Hey, Jess. Welcome. All right. See? Instantly more manageable. <laughs> so, do we want to put some paint on there? suppose we could. What time is it? 3.05, 1.30. What's that, an hour and a half? These really thick bits, these, these might peel off. But these that get over the edge there and hard like that, they just won't come off. Okay. Let us... I need some room. 40. Give me this. I'll probably use this. I'll probably use this. Sheesh. This and grab these. Okay. And we're back. So I want to look at the one. Oh, I don't know what I did. I know what I did. So here's a little bit of this piece that I jelly printed before. And you can see where I use my cracker crackle roller. 
and then this here to make these round bits. Um, and there was foil on my plate. And what color was that? I think that's that black flash. I don't know. Let's try a couple different things. But you can see where I, I have used those papers. Some red pan pastels. Turn your jelly paint into a red one. My, hang on. My camera's all jacked up here. What's going on? Um, I'll leave that up to you, Eileen. I'm not a fan of pan pastels or any pastels. I don't like how dry they get and crumbly and powdery and dusty. And if they get, if you use the kind that you touch, I think I don't like that feeling on my fingers. Hey, Monica. Welcome. So here I used a little piece, right? And that collage, you can see that paper. I've used it several times. Not there, not there. Well, maybe I haven't. Thought it did. <laughs> well, really? There, here's another. The, oh, the whole background of that was that piece. I remember I did some of the foil scripting on it with the quill pen. I added that on there. But this whole background started out. And see the big... Um, using this on the jelly plate there to make that those that circular kind of grid, right? Yeah, I know I have, I had all of them, Gail. And I got rid of, I had almost the whole set of pan pastels for some reason. I thought I had to have them some years ago. And uh, they're all going about a tray of like 10 of my favorites. This, no, this was a different piece, but I used the same paint on it. No, maybe I didn't. Oh, here it is. Just what I did last night. I know there was another piece in there. All right. And I had punched this hole out of it. And then I went back and plugged it with the, that was the, the packaging that this stamp came off of. And that's the picture of this on the package. <laughs> CZ, what time is it? 3.09. We'll be, you're screaming at 4.30, right? Oh, hey, Terry, welcome. Yeah, I just, I just don't, uh, not my thing, not my thing. Um, make sure there's no. Hang on. Oops, sorry. Okay, we'll see you at 4.30. Okay, so see what I do? I tap when I'm stalling to think. Well, I know I want to use the crackle again. I thought that looked pretty cool, and it lets some of the stuff show through. Do you want me to, to share it, Gala? I saw it. It looks really cool. Is that done with that wet technique with the black flash paint? Gayla just sent me a picture of something she's working on. So, okay. I have permission to share. So this is what, what Gayla is working on. Oh, it is that technique. Sorry for the glare of the lights. Look at that texture. Look at the texture. That's what Gayla is working on as she's being my mod extraordinaire. That looks really cool. I love it. I can't wait to see what you do with that little booger. What size is that? I like that. I love it. A long vertical format like that. Thirty-five inches tall. Cool. 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 Okay. Let's. Um, I'm going to try more translucent colors before we get up to the um, black flash. 
actually, let me try. Um, I'm going to mix this. If you guys watch Robin McClendon, you must follow her on YouTube and Patreon. Cool stuff. Cool, cool stuff. And she uses these color shift folk art paints um, for like a glazing layer because um, they're very thin. They're not highly pigmented. Um, and she likes mixing the orange and the aqua to come up with like a mossy green. Um, I probably have too much paint on here because that's what I do. Um, might have had too much blue on there. That's okay. Here's my next. Oh, see how green it came out over there? Maybe I'm just not seeing it right on the plate because of the shift. Oh, yeah, when it shifts down this way, it's all green. That's why they call it color shift. All right, let me put a couple impressions or maybe just at least one impression of this on here. I love this texture plate. Um, you know what? I'm going to try to put this on this deli and see what happens. It's going to pick up paint and remove it. Let's see what this does. Patty is stirring the paint with a roller. Yeah, man. That's a very advanced technique, Eileen. Sorry you haven't been able to keep up with that. <laughs> oh, look at that. It pulled off some of my um, old paint off of here. Ah! <laughs> okay. So I want to put some more. Where did I put it? I just had it in my hand. Oh, it's under here. There we go. just a little bit a little schmutz on there so I'm going to take one of these pieces and I'll just start down let's see this is this bigger this way maybe it's maybe this where's my coffee I don't have any I have one cup this morning I'm a one cup a day girl All right. Oh, Clayton, see the stamp, the texture plate in there with the zodiac signs? And here's the little needlepoint canvases down there, but that does come out like a gold, a green gold. Now let's. Let's do this emerald green. We're going to do a lighter layer and a little bit of this aqua and see what happens. Did it again, Eileen, just to blow your mind, girl. <laughs> All right, now this some more down there. I'm going to crackle this. And I'm going to crackle it off on here. Crackle off. So how am I going to do this? I'm right-handed. Everything's on my left side. But we'll figure it out. So this is going to roll a crackle texture and it's going to pick up some paint, so we'll just drop it down on there. It's very faint, very subtle. Of course, after it rolls the first length of the roller, it's going to lighten up, right? But that's okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay, there's some still on there. Say so there's a little bit on there. And oh, you know what I didn't do? Ah, I didn't put more foil on my plate. I want to put more gold leaf on my plate. I'm gonna do it. Give me a minute. I like the color where they overlap too. All right, just getting some paint on here. Make them a little bit different. Scotch. <laughs> Eileen, don't give all my secrets away. What's the matter with you? I'll use this one here. I accidentally discovered uh, doing this when I had, I was doing the last eye stencil sale. And, um, oh, by the way, Jamie has got a coupon code now for eye stencils. Um, APG Jamie, if you want to go over to her channel and check out that coupon code. I think it's APG25 for the whole site. Uh, I'm going to be doing a sale after Christmas when the new website is up. Um but if you need stencils for Christmas and Joan's going to have a bunch of new designs, I'll have some new designs and uh, we'll go from there. But anyway, when I was doing the last sale, squirrel, forgot what I was saying, I had to pull the print and there was a hunk of, um, sorry, Patty, what are you saying? Oh, for telling on me. Um, I was pulled the print and there was a hunk of gold leaf in it. I thought, how the heck did that? And I realized some had fallen on my plate some point of the craziness and uh so i um started putting it on there intentionally and haven't stopped doing it since um let's put something oops kind of sheer what's this this is a deco art champagne gold i want something clearer though i think let's try this one this is martha stewart light gold and this, I just want a really light layer. This is like a pearl color. And I didn't crackle over on this side yet, so I'm going to crackle. And you know what? This, I'm just going to lift this off. And I'm going to put it on what my future washi tape. Oops, I missed a spot. Okay, you can even see it on there. Um, and let's... Um, let's pick it up on here. I know, right, Judy? <laughs> I hear you. It just gives that nice little sparkle. Who doesn't like a little sparkle? That picked that almost all up. Didn't quite want that much on there, but you never know what's going to happen. That's a real faint sheen of a pearl color that's on there now that muted that down. And I'm going to use that color over here again. Hey, babe. I have several different of those rollers, um, Tori. I um, That's just the one I've always kind of gone to. I just like the random pattern. Oops, what am I doing? I can't even see. 
the, the crackle lines are looking a little fatter. I think it's kind of caked up with some paint. I might have to wash that off again. That looks pretty. It's real subtle. Okay. And let's, uh, we don't have this over here yet. Let's pop some of this as another layer over here. All right, let's go halvesies this way. See what happens. Where are you? There we go. Wait a minute, what can't you find? The rollers? Are you guys talking about the rollers? I think they were an old scrapbook thing from years ago. Um, this is called Rollograph might be checked eBay. Memory Essentials. Um, I, I do like it. Now this this piece is getting a little away from me here. <laughs> now that's how I'd rather have the foil come out, but those came out rather clumpy. I don't know why that paint must have been extra sticky. Um, not, not overly thrilled about that one yet. Let's go back to this piece and let's try right off the bat with Black Flash. This is the black flash color shit. Oh, I was gonna roll it on with this. Oh. <laughs> Have I streamed since Thanksgiving? I don't know if I have or not. Oh, you know what? I might put this over here and give that a little more something. Let's see what that looks like there. Oh, you can't even really see it. Oh, there you can see it in the middle. Is that Oakley? Oak, come here. You want to say hi? Hey, Shelly. Oakley. Come here, boo-boo. Oakley. Oh, he's got his head over. I think he's looking for prints. <laughs> it's over by the sump pump. Come here, Boo. Come here and say hi. I'm going to move the camera, so hang on to your lunch. Come here, Boo-Boo. Come here, let's say hi to the lady. Come here. There's Oakley. Hey, Boo-Boo. Look up here. Or not. Oh, well, that was, that was a lot of ado about nothing. I think you may have seen his little nosy. Try like cake decorating section. Oh. <laughs> My little knucklehead. Okay, I'm going to try putting this in here again because I like this. There. Aunt CB is saying hello, handsome Oakley. Dave said he thought you were talking to him, CB. Mm -hmm. Oh, you rascal. See you guys. This one's kind of long. Yeah. It's either short or long on this one. It was a little wonky on my cut. That's okay. He's handsome. I'll give him that. He could be a little rascal. He's, I think he's getting better, though. I got to tell you. No, look. See, I'll yapped and let that dry and hardly got anything off of it. Let me rub harder.
Well, that's just icking it up. Let's have a look at my sample. <gasps> what did I do? But it looks so cool. I think that's just black flash. I think I just goofed it up because I was yapping and not picking it up correctly. All right. We'll have another go. <laughs> Too late, CB's back upstairs. <laughs> um, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm I'm purposely waiting a little bit to let that dry, and I don't know why. But you know, this has been drying forever. I use this little one as a paint palette um, for some paint I put on here for whatever I was doing. And then I rolled out the rest of it. And then I did another color and I rolled out the rest of it. So I, who knows what all's on here. But I'm going to pick this up and try to print that and see what happens. And I think this is what I did it with that came out really cool. I'm going to put that right in that journal. See, oh, too much. Lord, girl. What the hell's the matter with you? All right, let me just grab my journal. Yeah, the feisty one. <laughs> All right, let's just plop this right in the middle of this page. That'll be a good starting point for whatever I do next in here. Or it will all get covered up. Let's do it this way. Peel the paper off. Oh, it's not coming off. Oh, a little bit of it is. It looked really cool the last time I did it. I think this might have been a little... Um, no, it's not all coming off. Just a little bit here and there. So you just pulled a little bit of it off this time. But I did this in the background on one of these. Somewhere here. The top of this, that's what this, the background paint is. See up through here. I took that plate was laying right like this. And then I did another one like this, but I ended up covering all but the little ends here with collage. But that was... That was that that combination. Artistic painting studio. There you go. Kathy Arbor will help spend your money. <laughs> you little rascal. I have more of them somewhere. Oh, here they are. They have different sizes. Here's a checkerboard. What's this one? This one's just all dots all over it. Different size circles. See, they're kind of scrapbooky, cutesy mostly. I was drawn to the crackle myself. Um, all right, let's try. Just for shits and giggles, as we say. Yeah, actually, Xandra brought me this last time she was here. We shall use this on the plate. Laying right under my nose. Got a 
empty this trash. It's getting a lot of control. All right, let's do this. Let's take this up with this turquoise. Remember last time I was doing prints. Where did they go? Where? Where? And I used that this turquoise aqua flash underneath and let it crackle on this. Um, remember that from last time? See the the clear blue in the background with the crackles? This was on that vintage onion skin, so it really wrinkled up, and that's what made the crackles. And then I had black flash and bronze on the plate that it picked up. I love that one. Okay, what are we doing? What are we doing here? And you can see the different color in the flash of this come out against this darker color, which is one of the reasons I chose that. It wasn't just willy-nilly. <laughs> Most of what I do is willy-nilly, but that's I actually thought about. Let's do this. Let's see what happens here. You know, you can use fun foam on um, like a toilet paper core roll um, and kind of make a roller out of it for the jelly plate. Kind of covered up the, you can still see some of the um, paper that I started out with that I wanted to try to embellish and cover, but apparently I'm covering it this time. But you can see the color shift on there going from like a aqua to a bluey purple. All right, let's put that out of the way. Uh, <laughs> this is getting more interesting over here. Sorry, CB. Oh, I want to use this. Let's do something on this a bit over here. Um, what color? What color? What color? Let's go back to the black mash and see. I'm just going to put a thinner layer. That much paint. Okay. Um, oh, and look, this is wide enough that I can just go this away. Oh, look at that. I'm going to keep going and roll that off right there. Oh, look at you. Ha ha. Oh. I think another trip to the dollar store might be in. I'm still doing that. I'm going to grab a clean one. I think that's going to be yummy. So let's try for as much of that. Let's go this way as we can get. These were um, for cake. Cake Boss. I think Z got these at the dollar store. Get your cake on. Oh. Some of those look rather 3D, like right in this row. And I should have had more gold leaf in here. Foil leaf. I say them backwards every stinking time. Let's see if I can get little tinier bits on this. This one's really bright and doesn't really have the same 
I should be taking up. I'm only using this piece because it's coming off the backing. So rather than lose it, I just thought I'd throw it in something. Okay, let's um, let's do more of that because we can. I know, right? She finds the coolest stuff. Let's do that again, shall we? Um, this is the black flash. And I'll oh oh for Pete's sake. Got a little boo boo going there, and I'm lifting the paint off now. Crap. That's all right. Um, there's enough on the edge for me to use as handles and just keep it rolling. And I'm putting some pressure on it. Look at that, it's like lifting everything but the swirls. How cool is that? I don't know why it's doing that. But I like it. Oh, look. My, my um, sparkles are stuck to that. Ah, lordy. kind of crazy. All right, let's let's do something with this. I'm going to try to let's do this. I'm going to crackle Put the crackle down here and then drop it down here where it's printed darker on the paper. And then let's pick this up this way. Let's see what happens. Hey, Gail. Oh, I just finished decorating for Christmas. Oh, I asked earlier, have I streamed since Thanksgiving? I don't remember. Did I tell you guys about the refrigerator, dishwasher, vacuum cleaner, and Christmas tree disaster? <laughs> it wasn't all that bad, actually. All was not lost. I am I am mangling these papers up. I'm not doing them justice and I'm not I mean, this isn't coming out how I had it in the head. I got one more quarter here I'm gonna try. I don't dislike any of them. They're just not what was in my little head. Let's do this. Let's do this. Where is it? Um, huh. Did I put it away? Perhaps? Yeah, this is the Quinn Nickel Azo. It does, Gala. Let's put a little bit of this down, right? That's the Golden's Fluid Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold. Very transparent. Much like Gala. <laughs> and something else. Oh, let's do this. Let's do the Champagne Gold by Deco Arts. Just to get another really light bit in here. 
And let's mush these two around and let's just see what happens here. Let's put this bad boy in here and let's make some of these little hoopty loops here. I don't know if that's even going to show anywhere. Let's try to put it on there. Oh, anyway, see, squirrel, forgot what I was talking about again. So um, we had 15 people for Thanksgiving. And the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, once we had done all of our shopping for all the food and everything, uh, we're sitting in the living room watching TV. And all of a sudden, it sounds as though the refrigerator is going to take off for greener pastures. It's like a freight train. Not that loud. But, I mean, it was all of a sudden the fan is, like, really loud. I thought, oh, don't, please, don't go up on me. <laughs> With all that food crammed in there, we had two refrigerators full of stuff, plus two big turkey breasts brining in the coolers. Um, anyway, it was late in the evening. Dave pulled out the, um, oh, I can live with that. Dave pulled out the uh, refrigerator, took the back off of it, worked some uh, refrigerator magic, and uh, it stopped making that noise. And it's been working ever since. Knock on wood. Um, and uh, so I cooked all day Wednesday to get stuff done early uh, that I could beforehand. The pies, the spare ribs and sauerkraut, uh, together the sweet potato casserole, the macaroni and cheese. So, so I had to bake them the next day. Um, I made this homemade hot bacon dressing that I do. I forget what all I did, but I had a bunch of stuff, right? So I ran the dishwasher that night and it didn't drain all the water out of it. I had a, a couple inches of water in the bottom of it. And I thought, oh, uh, oh. Uh, so, and that's, it's been doing that to us off and on. Dave cleaned out and snaked the pipe one time and uh, the hose, and that seemed to help it, um, So we got up Thanksgiving morning and we're cooking even more. And I don't want this to get too dark on the overlap. So I'm just going to take what I need there. So we get up Thursday morning and start preparing uh, and cooking the rest of the stuff that we had to do. And I told Dave, I said, I'm going to run the dishwasher and get rid of all this stuff. So we have room for all the dishes. Oh, I didn't put any marks in it. He dumbass. Yes, I Gail will mark that one down. <laughs> Darn it. I forgot to do this stuff. See what happens when I talk and do this? I'm blaming it on you guys. All right, let's do this. Let's put a little of that down and try to put a layer over this. Um so I decided. We would run the dishwasher to, so it's empty by the time dinner happens. So I have room for all the plates and all that stuff, right? Well, sounding good on paper and all, um, didn't work. <laughs> Wouldn't drain all the water. Couldn't put it on just drain to drain it afterwards. Had to get the wet back and vacuum it out. So now the, now the dishwasher is... Uh, not well on Thanksgiving. Um, that was Thanksgiving morning. So we did everything by hand, the old fashioned way. I mean, it's not like we got to take it down to the river and try to scrub it out with a rock or anything, but <laughs> it was, you know, inconvenient, let's say. Um, so then that Saturday, I guess it was, we were going to um, put up the Christmas tree. So I go, <laughs> I'm going to go this way so I get most of that Zodiac design. Sorry. 
Dave brings up the Christmas tree. And we knew last year we were going to have problems because it's about 10 years old. It's a pre-lit tree. We had to search for hours to find a bulb that was causing half the tree to be out. It was a pain in the neck. And um, so, oh, that's way, way subtle on there. See it? You can see it, not see it. I love this side. This side, eh. Um, so anyway, I um, <laughs> we put the tree together, like 70% 70, 70 of it was dead. So we donated that to uh, Christmas Tree Heaven and um, had to go get a tree. So now we're shopping for our dishwasher and a tree. And I go to use our Dyson... Um, it's a cordless vacuum and, um, well, that broke too. <laughs> so last, the weekend after Thanksgiving, we had to go out and buy a dishwasher, a vacuum and a new Christmas tree. So there you have it. Um, so the, the, tr the trees up looks great. Uh, the vacuum came. We got to install the charging unit for that. I think that's what Dave was doing when he came down here, actually, looking for tools. Um, and the dishwasher comes December 14th. Luckily, the refrigerator's still hanging in there. So, <laughs> but come on, people. So, we're bleeding money. Now, let's go Christmas shopping for all these kids. <laughs> Uh, so what do I want to do to bring this one back? I know what I want to do, and I know that's going to lose a lot of, uh, the under paper, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's go with some of this bronze. See how, uh, opaque this is. Let's do this one here because I'm going to off print this on something else. And I think that'll show. Maybe I'll do it on this darker bit of this one. Yeah, right. Well, they told us that we were lucky. We got almost 12 years out of our dishwasher because they said they're usually good for nine to 10. So now, so our appliances are the black, glossy black. Um, they match the, the bits of black that are in our granite and made the cabinets pop and everything. So they're black. Guess what they don't make anymore? Black. They make black. Um, stainless that looks like a charcoal gray, which is really pretty. Hey, Shelly, uh, which is really pretty. However... It doesn't match. So we we had to shop around until we found it was a KitchenAid. And none of that came off. But look how pretty that looks. <laughs> um, I'm just going to pick a lot of this up. Because that's cleaning off the plate pretty well. Um, to find a KitchenAid model that came in that old black. But it's hundreds of dollars more than the stainless or the black stainless. And it's an older type finish. Really? So, we got a dishwasher. Yes, we did. Now I'm going to pick this up on this bit. Let's see what happens. I didn't yap too long that this is dry. Um, they did tell us that there's one brand, and I don't remember what it was, for refrigerators that they no longer make white but you can still order white but it's six hundred dollars more than stainless or the black stainless and i saw one of the samples that's i think that's ridiculous so this one of the play one of the samsung had um a refrigerator there um what the hell happened there 
not at all what was in my head. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's I think I might as well use a piece of cardstock and not the handmade paper um, because it's going by the wayside. Um, trying to get little bits of that foil to come up, but it's not budging. Wow. Okay. Now what do we do with that? I'm thinking it needs uh, like some pictographs or even scripting written on it. Written on it. I don't know. Um, speaking of which, let's try that. Um, so what was I saying? Appliances no longer making white ones. We got black ones. What was I saying, Gala? I know you were hanging on to my every word. I'm going to put some of the champagne gold down and let this dry. Um, what was I saying? I thought I had something else. Some sort of riveting tidbit that you're all like waiting for bated breath. Yeah, I always, I like them too. Um, oh, Samsung. Had a had a unit there, a refrigerator in the the um, black uh, stainless, but they had a little um, file pouch thing on the front of it where they had little two by two samples um, of different colors, and they had regular stainless, the black stainless, and they had what was it called? Um, ah. I forget what they called the finish, but it was a rose gold finish. And I thought, you know, if you did a kitchen from scratch and could, you know, make the countertops and the and the cabinets around that, I bet that would really look cool. Um, to have the whole suite of, you know, pieces. Uh, that color but they said that it was a painted finish and then if it gets scratched it's very hard to repair and now i have golden bits on my plate which is just going to make it even better i'm going to have to clean this off at some point i guess yeah that's what ours are so for now we got another black one so hopefully that'll stay with us until we either move or the house outlives us. <laughs> I'm going to put my cool heat gun on. Don't anybody panic. It's cold air. Cool air. Stay. I can put it on here. Touch it. Right. Yeah, I think it's fairly new, Shelly. Um, Carolina Brown, the greatest black and brush woman and more and more it. Yeah, they have so many options now. And at least it was the cheapest of appliances that went up that we had to replace, but still. Oh, I know. Remember the uh, avocado and the harvest gold and what was the other one? During that frame, wasn't there another color? Harvest gold, avocado. My mom had harvest gold at one point when it was the hot thing. All right, feels pretty dry. Let's try Oops. Let's try I don't know why I feel like I got to shake up Sumi ink. It was called Oh Copper Tone. I want to remember that. That's kind of rose gold predecessor. 
But this was like a pinky champagne uh, rose gold. Actually, it was not too far from that. Not quite as shiny. Uh, but um, along those lines of that hue. Uh, all right, let's try. I use my new bamboo brush. And let's do a little... Let's see. Hang on. Let me let me think this through. What I'm going to pick this up with? This one. This one. That one. I don't know. I might pick it up over here. So if I do that, I'm going to lay it this way. So I want the scripting to go long ways. Okay. So you got to talk to myself sometimes. Chocolate brown. I bet that was the copper tone. Oh, yeah. So let's see if this works. Just doing this really big just to get some marks on the plate here. Oh, I don't remember that one. It's pale chocolate milk. We lived on the wrong side of the tracks for that one, I think. These brushes, they really give you that, um, see how this part of this tea came out wide here and went like into nothing? I think it's how sharply these tips are on here that help it come out like that because it's not the talent of my hand, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, funny, not funny. Holds a lot of ink. This one is the elk one, I believe. No, I know it is. I know it's the elk one. <coughs> All right. Now we got to let that dry and yeah, this is one of the ones Robin McClendon was talking about and she couldn't remember the guy's name and we, Picola found him and um, he's got a website now. So I placed my order, but that's got a really, really fine pointy like end in one hair tip. That one's elk. That's the small three quarter inch. And this one is the small, this is the goat and synthetic. And it's got a much bigger, but really fine tip. Um, I think this was the inch. I don't remember if that was small or medium. It's much bigger than this one. That must be the medium. I have to look back to swear to it. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to pull out the, the cool gun, not the heat gun. Uh, yeah, the real, the, they're not cheap. The real hair, the one with the elk, was like $70.
but that's the one that Robin um, got like almost 20 years ago and still uses every day. So it's an, it's an investment brush. They're com he's coming to um, a craft show, American Craft Council show in Baltimore in February. The week, actually, Galas, the week after we get back from uh, Arizona. Guess where I'll be? We've got some really cool ones that I wouldn't order without having them in my hand to try out. Again, not a heat gun. Cool gun. Boots on my hand. Touching the metal. Trying to get these blobs to dry. Isn't it fun watching ink dry? Ugh. Some of these just don't seem like they want to dry. I might just let them make a little smudgy mark. Oh, you know what, though? Patty, kind of exceptional brush is worth the money. That's my justification, too, Judy. <laughs> oh. You know what? I'm going to pick that. I'm just going to use this little piece I was dilly dallying with the other day. I'm just going to lay that on here and let the wet bit soak in and just make marks. They can just make marks in the background. That's okay. Because I want to get this dry. I have no patience. See, now it looks a little splatted up. I know that'll make some people crazy, but I'm not one of them. Other things make me crazy. I'm not saying I'm not crazy. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to put that again with the, with the whole gun. Because I need to go over this with another layer of paint. So I don't want it to smush up too much. When I put the other wet paint on it. So these little damp bits. I'm going to try to dry those. A little bit. And now, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put aqua flash over this. I, I think that's what I'm going to do. Watch me. I'm doing it. But you know what? This might turn out so cool. I'm going to do this. On a different piece of paper. Just in case it's fabulous. So this is a piece of the calligraphy paper. Just in case. I don't know. I got a good feeling. But again, in my head, these things sometimes look a lot different than they come out. <laughs> All right. I like to put that baby down here while she's wet. And also the piece I thought about putting it on was only going to grab part of this print. C. Hammer, hello, watching Robin video and saw you were live. Oh, cool. Is that Claire? Is that Claire? C. Hammer? Are you trying to sneak in with a new identity? <laughs> yes, see? <laughs> it was good seeing you the other night. I ran into Claire over at the Queen's Inc. last Friday. They had a 20th anniversary celebration. All right. Oh, I should have pulled this on onion skin. So I've got the crinkles in it. This is getting a little bit of a crinkle. All right. Let's see what we're going to get. Well, that was a good call. And you love her. Look at the edges of that with all that. You can't hate that. Oh, that would make some really cool two inch wide washi tape, wouldn't it? Uh. 
Hello. Oh, I like you. I do, I do, I do. I'm pretty sure that'll make two, two, two. Oh, wait, two, two. Oh, look at these cool crusty bits here. Mm -mm -mm. I hear Dave up there talking. I can't tell if he's on the phone or if he's holding a conversation with Oakley. <laughs> Let's see if I can get these mushed up here a little bit to do something with those. You know what? I might do something like that again. Um. So I wonder, I'm thinking, my brain's thinking now. If I go in first with a dark color and then do the scripting in the watercolor, the rose gold, and then put a light sheer layer like the champagne gold over that to pull it, you know how you find out? You just do it. That's how you do it. You just give it a go. But I want to put, oh, see, you almost let me mess up there. I want to put more of this down. Because you can't, oh, you can't go wrong with some gold leaf on your plate. Picking up little bits of joy here and there. That's all. Oop. Or a lot of joy. <laughs> Either way, joy is good. Um, so I have, this is called gunmetal. This one's pretty. This is like a metallic Payne's gray. It's called pewter, but it's got a blue cast to it compared to the other one. I might use that. Or I could use, that's a brown. That's like a chocolate brown. I'm thinking what would look good with the rose gold and how opaque this is. Ha, ha, ha. Thinking, I'm thinking. Can you pick it up with the Dixie paper? Or is that not strong enough? Um, I don't know. I think I've tried that on my plate before. I don't know. What the hell? We'll try it. I'm going to blame it on you if it doesn't work. As you could imagine. Um, oh, here's the other one. Oh, gunmetal. No. Oh, no. Gunmetal in this. I think I'm going to go with this dark blue. So I'm going to put a thin layer. Oop. Oh. The dark blue that is separating in the bottle. That was just like the, the medium came out of it there. Hang on. Won't the dark color kill the gold? I want it to contrast with this. Rather than putting the black script down and having white paint, I was going to do dark paint with light script. Oh, I see what you're saying. Kill the gold. This, kill this. I don't... I don't know. It is. It is the top. Yeah, you might have a point there, Judy. Let me try that. This is why I have you people here. <laughs> I am a danger to myself. Okay. All right, back with the heat gun on the cold setting. <laughs> Lord knows I've killed a lot of stuff. This is Deco Art. 
champagne gold. It's got the finest little bits of glimmer in it. I don't know if it'll even pick up on the plate. Let me put my hand under it. It's hard to see. It would focus. It would help. Well, you'll just have to trust me again. All right, done and done. All right, let's try this. Let's see what happens. Let me get this wet. This likes to be real wet. Watch the little pigments jump around. I love dancing pigments. I got that a little too wet. Got to get over on the dry side here. This is going to probably come out a little bit more um, blurry. Maybe. It's hard to see what I'm doing. On that with the reflection and all this being all light on light pretty gold is that you want the design this you mean making this watercolor myself yes sandra sells this in her shop as ptp rose gold she uses my recipe with permission of course <laughs> and she makes other ones too a mermaid's tail and uh, I forget what else. Ocean something and a whale's whale something. I forget. I forget the colors that she uses there. Um, I forget what the heck I'm doing now. I'm just doing these big and loosey goosey. All right. Okie dokie. Now let's dry that bad boy. Maybe the word must be soft. Uh, was I looking for a word? I might have been looking for a word. Okay. I'll go with Gail's word. This is going to dry quicker, though. What time is it? 4.15. I'll be on three. And oh, Gail, I mean, uh, Sandra, I'm going to have to wrap up with this call. Good Lord, I forgot about it. what time it is. Sandra's coming on at 4.30. All right, now I'm going to try to bust this edge up a little bit and hopefully pick some of that up. Okay, so now you can't really see that that well, but it's there. Now I'm going to use, I don't know, do I want to use the black gold or this gunmetal? No, pewter. 
I'm thinking maybe go back to the black gold so it's even a little darker. But it's got that bronze in it, so that might look too much like this. I think I'm going to go with this. Let's just go with what I got in my hand. Okay, this is the pewter. And it may not be dark enough, but we'll see. Let's not give up yet. Don't anybody abandon ship. That's going to be cool. All right. Now, I wonder if I should put this on the fuzzy side or the slick side, Gala. I'm guessing on the fuzzy side, right? Oh, Lord. Here we go. Fuzzy side of all pur purpose Dixie wrap. The finest of the deli papers. Please don't leave yourself on the plate. I will blame Gala if this doesn't work, <laughs> as I always do. <laughs> oh, mercy. It's wrinkling, so I might get some cool little textures in there. This is great stuff to collage with because it's so thin. You can see my see how see through it is. You put daddy vans on both sides of this. Jan, I think, is the one that discovered that. If you daddy van both sides of this, it's clear. It's like glass, even clearer than glassine. So when you stamp on it and then do that, when you collage it, all you see is the stamped image. You don't see any of the paper that carried that image there. Come on, give me these crusty bits. I like how it's crinkling. Can you guys see that? All right. Pull, pull, pull. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. As Oakley would say, oh, my goodness. Ugh. Oh, I'm getting some of those. Hang on. All right. Well, look at that. It pulled up almost all of the foil or the leaf. I gotta get a carrier paper here to put this under because I'll use a stencil because it's just flopping around there. It's so fine. But the rose gold is very faint, very subtle. That was probably still too light of a color. But I did get some crusty bits around the edges. Yeah, they're pretty cool. And now it's focusing for Mama. Got some crusty bits down here. Down here, I got a lot of them. They're like three-dimensional crusty bits down here. Peeling up off the paper, even. So that's very, well, you can see the stencil design through it even, but that's not, that's not helping you, is it? But um, let's do this. Put these behind it. It's almost so shiny that you can hardly see the, the scripting in there. You can in areas, right? But you can't hate it. I mean, it's pretty cool. Little bits of that. Oh, how about if we stamp? Wait a minute. One more quick print. One more, one more. Then I got to get off of here. I'm going to put black on my plate, regular black. And I'm going to use my plate as an ink pad. I don't want to put that over that. And I'm going to pick up black on this. And I'm going to stamp it on this. Possibly. 
Gail, uh, Tam was supposed to be a hundred. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, did you have a... Um, I don't know, Gail, did you? <laughs> Oh, waiting for the big focus. That's kind of cool. Huh, interesting. Let's do another one. On something else. I don't want to do one on this one. I think I'm going to make tape out of that. I love that one. Um, what can I put it on? Oh, I'm just going to say, where's my other papers? They're right here, upside down. Hello. Um, 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 let's do it on this. Since this one was kind of blah. I'm talking so much. I'm probably not going to get enough paint on here. Try to get some down here where I see wet paint. Let's put that down here and see what we get. Yeah, Xandra's going to be on in seven minutes, guys. So it's Scraps to Beauty, for those of you who don't know. Um, she's going to show some cool stuff. Oh, very faint. But still a little something on there. I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but I'll do something, even if it's wrong. Should I pick that up on there? I said even if it's wrong, didn't I? Let's see. Just a light little wash of it. Oh, that was wrong. <laughs> Give me another piece of Dixie. Come here, Dixie wrap, old friend. All right, good enough. But look what's left for me next time. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to shut her down, unplug my heat gun. Do you like that one? I'm learning to. I'm learning to get over this one. <laughs> Thank you, Gala. <laughs> All right, kids. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. It's been fun. It's been real. I'm going to make some more tape out of this because that looks pretty cool. And CB may never get my roll-offs again. Not true. I will save you some, my friend. All right, guys. Catch you next time. Take care. Have a great week.